Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and today let's talk about the Apple Watch Series 6. But before we do, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on our channel and of course there's also the bell icon. Push it so that you don't miss any future updates from us. Now let's talk Series 6. First and foremost, let's go over the basic specs and what's new in the Series 6. All of your watch straps from the older Apple Watches, as long as they follow the same size scheme, will be compatible with the Series 6. Uh, the new processor on this S6 SIP system and package, which enables some very interesting features on the Apple Watch. You continue to get the ECG uh, feature as part of the Series 6, whether you get the LTE version or the Wi-Fi version. In addition to that, you have a brand new SpO2 sensor, which is a blood oxygenation sensor. You also get a much brighter display and also, of course, it's always on. And in addition to that, you have on, also on board always on altimeter, which is great if you like going for hikes or if you do a lot of trekking in the mountains, etc. A lot of the features that, that are a part of Series 6 are also enabled by Watch OS 7. So we're going to talk about everything that the watch can do and it will be a conjunction of both hardware and software. So let's begin. Now I've been using the Apple Watch Series 6 for a little over two, three weeks actually. And I'm usually a Garmin user. I've been using a Garmin Instinct ever since it came out. And it was one of the first uh, smart, well not smart, but it was the first fitness smartwatch that I bought. Um, I do a lot of cycling. I do a little bit of running. I walk a lot. I play basketball every opportunity I get. And as it, while it may not look like it, I do try and follow a fit lifestyle. Um, probably the way I look is the reason why. Anyway, that's besides the point. So, one of the most important things about the Apple Watch is that it is a, a smartwatch and a fitness device all rolled into one. And it performs both of those functions in a very, very seamless and incredibly reliable manner. The always on heart rate sensor on here, well, it picks up your heart rate throughout the day and it actually delivers some very interesting statistics. It'll deliver what was your lowest heart rate, resting heart rate, which is, you know, the rate at which your heartbeat is beating when you're not doing much. Uh, what is the interval between two beats? And of course, you also have ECG. Uh, it is a single, it's equivalent to a single line ECG and Apple makes a very, very clear disclaimer at multiple points while you're taking that reading that this is not medically valid for sound medical advice, but it is an indicator. And we've read so many stories of people having been alerted by the Apple Watch about uh, irregularities with their hearts and, you know, people being saved because of that feature. Very, very important if you're somebody who has a history of heart disease in the family or if you yourself feel that it's something that you may be developing due to an unhealthy lifestyle. So it's good to have. There is also now a brand new SpO2 sensor. Now SpO2 at Apple during the event when they unveiled the watch talked about how this could be used to sort of measure your blood oxygenation level. And given that this is COVID times and you know, uh, we want to know if we are low on blood oxygenation as a sign of maybe COVID infection. Um, there's also another very critical use for that sensor. The SpO2 sensor is responsible for delivering a statistic known as VO2 max. VO2 max is basically your, an indicator of how much oxygen your body is able to use during a workout. The higher that number goes over a period of time, it means your body is utilizing more oxygen and therefore you're getting better at whatever it is that you're doing. So let's say if I cycle 10 kilometers every day, my VO2 max could be 23 on one day and goes up to 25, 26, 28, 30, whatever. It keeps increasing. Even though I may be cycling the same amount in the same amount of time, VO2 max going in means my fitness level is getting better. My uh, muscles are gonna be less tired at the end of that workout. I'm going to be burning more calories. So overall, VO2 max is a very important metric. And if you speak to anybody who is in training uh, or is a serious athlete, they will tell that it is an important metric to know. The Series 6 finally delivers on that metric and it's very helpful. 
Now, in terms of its accuracy of tracking metrics, now I usually track all of my bike rides using a Garmin heart rate chest strap, which is one of the most accurate ways to pick up. A chest strap is the most accurate way to pick up heart rate during your workouts. Uh, and for my bicycle, I have Garmin's uh, bike computer, speed sensor and a cadence sensor. So they're dedicated sensors for a multitude of things and therefore the number coming out finally is absolutely accurate. Comparing that to the Apple Watch, you see that the watch is actually very, very rock solid. For starters, in terms of the heart rate throughout the workouts, the Apple Watch and the Garmin chest strap deliver near identical heart rate readings. The only difference is that the Apple Watch's heart rate readings do tend to trail behind that of the chest strap by about half a second or so, maybe a second in some points. The reason for that is that the chest strap is actually picking up heart rate data right from here, whereas the wrist worn device is going to be picking it up from your wrist. So there is a latency effect that comes in. So there's that. Um, honestly, that delay is not very, very critical unless you're in hardcore training for something like Iron Man, to be very honest. And I don't mean the superhero character, I mean the triathlon. Now, if that is what you're going for, then of course you may need a chest strap, which of course you can also pair with the Apple Watch if you need to, but that's a separate conversation. Uh, in terms of tracking your walks, your sleep, um, your general runs, again, the Apple Watch does a very good job. Sleep tracking is surprisingly accurate, but lacks richness of data that we see from other wearables like Fitbit, like Garmin, uh, the breakdown into sleep stages and all that's missing. However, if you use a third party app, you still get all that data. So the interesting thing is the Apple Watch hardware and software is capable of picking up that data and analyzing it, but natively it does not deliver deep sleep data. Third party apps too. So if you just invest in third party app, you will be good to go. So you of course got all of the key activities also built into the Apple Watch that you can track. And if you get the cellular version of it, you can actually leave your phone behind because you no longer need to be connected to, um, you know, you're, you're no longer tethered. GPS, by the way, is built into both the LTE and the non-LTE version of the Apple Watch. So you can of course track all of your outdoor workouts without having, to, without having the phone on board with you. Um, but of course, the cellular connectivity helps in case, you know, there's an unfortunate mishap or if you do want to stay connected throughout. So tracking wise, the Apple Watch does a very good job at providing not just the most common types of workouts, but also accuracy of tracking those workouts on your wrist. There's also some very interesting data that you will find if you dig into the health app. Uh, I was actually surprised to find that you have something called walking symmetry and double support time that the Apple Watch is capable of recording. Now, these are metrics uh, that I particularly found very useful because I'm recovering from a knee injury, which is about a year old. And what that knee injury ended up doing was it forced me to put a lot of weight on my other foot. And people who are facing similar issues or are overweight will often notice that when they walk, they may put more time on one foot than the other. If you want to figure that out, the Apple Watch can actually tell you. It has, it picks up something called walking asymmetry and uh, double support time. Double support time basically being how much time you spend on both your feet while you're walking and walking asymmetry being of course measuring uh, how much time you're spending on each foot. So that sort of a thing. And it's very, very, very interesting to see this kind of data. And there's a lot of very, very interesting kind of metrics that you will get out of the health app. Stuff that you would not ever think to, you know, look at, but it's there. It's about your health and it doesn't hurt to have it. Now, as a fitness tracker, as a fitness device, the Apple Watch doesn't do the usual, you know, uh, hey, it's been an hour that you've been sitting, now go for a walk. That typically a lot of other smartwatches will do. But the three ring system on the Apple Watch is an encouragement enough. And especially if you get into competition with some of your friends, it pushes you to close your rings every day. And especially if, like I said, if, you're, if you've got a few friends added to your health app or your fitness app, then you can also see their progress and feel 
you know compelled to compete if you have that competitive streak now let's talk about the smart features on the apple watch because this is something where the apple watch really really leaves anything that may compete with it far behind the best way to put it is that the apple watch is a miniaturized iphone on your wrist it it is so interesting that the watches user interface the way you navigate all of that is very similar to that of ios that's point number one point number two being um, everything works very very smoothly so you don't have the stutter in between screens you don't face any kinds of slowdowns you don't face any issues with the apple watch while you're using it as a smart device all your notifications are delivered straight to your wrist for apps that are enabled to do so and the other thing is that the ecosystem of apps for the apple watch has grown tremendously most fitness apps productivity apps they will have a counterpart for the apple watch uh, you can get all of your notifications on here uh, whether it's whatsapp instagram strava whatever it may be everything comes to your wrist email as well some of you may find that annoying some of you may enjoy it in which case you can tweak which applications you will allow to send the notification to the apple watch this works if you get the lte edition by the way this notification thing will continue to work even if your phone is not around so in all the sense the apple watch sort of becomes like a mini iphone you can take calls on it you can send messages from it if you don't have your phone around of course things like whatsapp may not work because you will there is no dedicated whatsapp app for the apple watch uh, but everything else seems to function fine. You can download your music to it. And now there's even Spotify on the Apple Watch. So there's that. Um, overall, like the Apple Watch tends to... Okay, let me rephrase that. Currently in the market, there are smartwatches and then there are fitness trackers. A lot of the smartwatches are great at being smartwatches, but not very good with fitness tracking. Fitness trackers are obviously not smart. So for example, my Garmin Instinct allows me to see notifications, but I can't do anything about them. Can't take calls on it, can't reply to messages on it, but you can on the Apple Watch. It does so both of these things in a very... It's not that it can do both, but it does both very, very well. And unfortunately, due to that, the only downside to the having the Apple Watch is the battery life. Now. Apple has made a lot of improvements to the Series 6. There's a new hardware in here, there's a brighter display in here, uh, there's better tracking. Despite all of that, you get about, Apple says, 18 hours of battery life, which is on the lower side. But 18 hours is taking into account that you're also working out every day. On days that you don't work out, like I don't if work out every day, I get about 28 hours of use out of the Apple Watch before I need to charge it again. The days that I do work out, I find that I will need to charge it within the 18 hour time slot. So 16 to 18 hours roughly. But that doesn't really hurt much because now because of the S6 SIP, the Apple Watch charges in about 90 minutes, 5% to 100% 90 minutes roughly, give or take. Um, and that's actually pretty nice because the earlier Apple Watches charge very slowly. So you've got faster charging and therefore it sort of balances out the fact that the battery life on the Apple Watch Series 6 has remained the same in comparison to that of the Apple Watch Series 5. Okay, so to conclude, if you guys are looking for a smartwatch while you're on an Apple ecosystem, the Apple Watch Series 6 makes perfect sense. Uh, the price tag, of course, is on the higher side compared to an Apple Watch SE. But the kind of features you get on here are, well, limited to the Series 6. So you are paying a premium for those features. Depends on whether you want them or not. If you are somebody who is into um, getting into fitness or you are somebody who is train in training for uh, just a more fit lifestyle, right? Not even athletically, not even competitively, but just that. The Apple Watch does a very good job at providing you all the relevant metrics and delivering them in a very accurate manner. Where you will have an issue is the battery life, but the faster charging does help. So overall, the Series 6 with its price tag of 
50,000 rupees for the LTE edition is definitely a pricey accessory but it is one that will easily last you 3 years is one that gives you great connectivity between your phone uh is great that of is one that is great as a fitness tracker so there really is no reason to consider it except for the fact that it has a pretty hefty price tag but you do get what you pay for so that's that so that's a review of the apple watch series 6 thank you guys for watching and uh, before you leave make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on our channel and of course the bell icon so that you don't miss any future updates from us as for me i'm going to see you in the next one